No wonder it takes us so long to get this van done. What have you been up to? I've been riding on a date. YouTube, thanks for checking out RV Daydream and joining us for the van build series. As you've seen last video, it was from October of 2017 and uh, we're September of 2018 now and I'm not even sure when this video is going up but it's going to be in a series and again we're going to get this all done and try to document as much as possible. Uh, you just saw that I did the roof vent. If you haven't had a chance to check that out, uh, go back a video or a couple videos. <laughs> and uh, take a look at it. Now in this case we're going to go ahead and jump inside the van because I need to update his electrical that runs all the components in the back so here we go. Well YouTube it's a new day on the van and today we're going to tackle this fuse box. Now this is something that was installed obviously a long time ago uh, back in uh, the 80s and it's uh, still working for the most part <laughs> except for stuff like that. Uh, so we went ahead and just got one of these uh, little Chinese fuse panels that uh, will replace that. Now the wire that's coming into this is a pretty good gauge of wire. It, it's not exactly small. Um, I think that it's probably an 8 gauge. If that's the case, uh, we're in good luck uh, as far as running everything back here because uh, it is kind of long. Um, so 8 gauge at the length of this van should be able to run uh, his refrigerator that he has because that one uh, is a uh, basically it says that it's about 5 amps operating however I think it's probably closer to 5 maybe 5 and a half and uh, you need uh, an 8 gauge for this length uh, to be able to power that and of course uh, everything else will be okay as far as what it can power now I don't know about that 12 volt setup there I don't know if there was an inverter in here that is now gone um, if it's I don't know where it would be mounted at if there still is an inverter somewhere but we'll go through this wiring we'll see what we can find here and uh, put it together yeah we're gonna get this done because once all the wiring set up then we can go ahead and start reinstalling all these panels in here and start building and making it the way we want it to so let's get to work I informed you incorrectly earlier uh, that says 12 volt I should have read it um, so what he's done is has a little junction over there that's for 12 volt um, we've identified all the wiring in here and uh, there's a couple of wires that are just kind of stringing out in the open uh, that's nothing but uh, there's a positive wire about halfway through on the RV there we just call that the wall positive because there's no negative to it and then up there behind the driver's head we just put driver's roof there's a positive wire that's there and these are pretty good gauge wires um, I would assume that they could probably handle at least uh, two amps uh, maybe even closer to five amps uh, this one over here, of course, we could double up and get a little bit more out of it because it's the same thickness gauge. And, you know, we can just put the two positives together to have that much more. And then over here, uh, we have, um, oh, that's right, we have uh, a positive and negative here. Uh, this is just one big positive that is split into two wires. Uh, and everything's fused up. Um, we can make this a little bit neater, but... Uh, you know most of this is going to be covered up with some sort of carpet or something but uh, the fuse box is finished and everything is connected and tight um, we've got it identified on a, on a piece of cardboard <laughs> uh, so we'll use that for now until we have a way to mark this correctly but this is for the fan uh, this is for the CB and the map light that's up front and then we have um, the uh, house outlet that's over that I showed you that's for the 12 volt then this is for the what used to be the water pump um, which will go ahead and probably use that as the water pump again because um, he does have a water pump and then this one here is again uh, on the driver's roof and then uh, this one here is the one on the fender that's really thick uh, the one that's doubled up and then this one is uh, for the uh, wall, the up high one. 
So we still have a place for three more circuits if needed. And uh, this fuse box is pretty decent. I'll, I'll put a link down below for this. And uh, if you decide you want to get this, it came with the fuses, it came with the terminal ends, and uh, of course the box itself. And then it came with some zip strips and uh, you know little things that we didn't really use. Um, of course it's Chinese, but that's it there. It's a 10-way box. So we're in pretty good shape as far as uh, the wiring. Now, instead of continuing to work today, <laughs> we're just going to go ahead and call it a day. And uh, when we come back, we're going to slowly start putting the panels up. Now that we know where all the wires are, we don't have to trace anything. Uh, we can put all the panels up and uh, button this back up the way it used to be. And then we got to do some cleaning. You can see the carpet's, you know, really black over here. Uh, we'll try to clean this up as much as possible and uh, then run the fan which is exceptional at this point um, and uh, the only reason there's brackets that are sticking out from the wall here in different places we didn't know if we was going to try to incorporate those for support of something um, I think it's probably best that we just take them off and, and we'll go from there but yeah it's coming along and it's really turned out quite well uh, as far as the wiring so um, his CB, he needs a new uh, mic, um, but it does work. Uh, so I went ahead and ordered a mic on uh, eBay. It'll be here uh, by next Friday. Uh, so in about seven days, we'll get it here, if not a little bit sooner. Yeah, I, I'm really happy with the way it's all turning out because he did want to have a CB. Um, I, I turned on mine and I could talk, you know, I could talk over here to this one, but his one at mic out. Um, so we're, we're in pretty good shape again coming along nicely so we'll pick it up in a little bit before I go in I wanted to check this thing out this is uh, original from the 80s uh, gas sniffer and this detects propane uh, what it is is the number one position on the switch is off the number two position on the switch is for the horn to, uh, to not be going I don't know how to describe that the beeper <laughs> um, but it's whenever you turn it on which is three it has to be on number three to be sensing gas um, when you first turn it on number three the horn goes off the beeper goes off uh, what you do is you move the selector to number two uh, for about 15 seconds 20 seconds and then it allows the system to warm up and then you move it to number three so right now it's in the sensing section to where it's waiting to smell for uh, liquid propane gas that's all it really is it's just propane gas sniffer this ain't carbon monoxide so guess what we're gonna do we're gonna give it a little gas and we're gonna see if this thing works so uh, there is a breeze that's kind of blowing but and I'm just going to ignite this thing or not ignite it but uh, allow gas to kind of squirt towards this so let's see how long this takes That thing works. <laughs> Isn't that incredible? You can see the red light there. And I've just got it powered off of here. Um, but it does work. This thing does work. Uh, I think I'm going to try to incorporate this on something that we get in the future because it's nice. Uh, if you think you smell uh, propane inside your vehicle, uh, this will tell you if it's there or not. Um, of course, my son, it really doesn't work for him. He may carry around a propane tank, though. If so, um, I'll get this wired up for him. But, yeah, this was original to, uh, to the RV here, which is kind of cool. Well, it's October 22nd, and uh, we're experiencing about 80-degree weather still, which is incredible. But we've got the van a little bit further. Of course, I showed you the wiring, uh, which just did happen yesterday. And now uh, all the panels are back up the way they should be. Um, made it much nicer in here but you can see there's some discoloration and uh, that had to do with him having a furnace in here uh, prior and uh, just road dirt also uh, again the van's only got uh, just over 90,000 miles now but it had less than 80 or just barely over 80 I should say when we got it so we're going to go ahead and get the uh, Bissell cleaner out and see if we can make this a little bit whiter. And uh, the carpet's good. The carpet's relatively new. I mean, there's a little bit going on here, but we're going to be covering this up. Um, and up there is definitely clean. It just needs swept. 
So we'll get the uh, cleaner out and make it look a little better and then we're gonna have to let it dry for a couple of days before it'll really show its true color because when it's wet it'll still be dark. But it's coming along. We're continuing on working with my son's van and you're gonna see here that we are definitely a few months down the road from when we last talked about the van whenever we were doing the installation of the fan and I wanted to show you this corner that's kind of dedicated in the house for my son's stuff and we're gonna be talking about all this stuff as we install it and where we install it and how we install it uh, but and I'm sure there's a few things here that looks pretty interesting and I've talked about and I've already kind of reviewed this refrigerator freezer uh, that's of course going to be shown on this video separately I've already done some tests and stuff on it um, we haven't done anything with this portable uh, toilet yet you can see it's still wrapped up in its wrapper and still has chemicals and stuff uh, you know just like it came from the factory but today we're going to talk about this little boy here and uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, do a little test we're gonna wait until it gets cool tonight which it's daytime right now today's high is 24 and uh, we're gonna wait till it gets cool and put it in the van and see what kind of temperatures we get as you can tell it's uh, been snowing on and off and like I said we've been laying off working on that van now my son uh, one of the reasons is he's working a lot of hours and he drives this van back and forth to work all the time uh, we've been doing quite a bit of stuff for our channel as you guys saw we came back from the RV show and the RV still covered up but you guys that are watching this van series um, again we're gonna wait until a little bit later this evening and uh, we're gonna wait till it gets really cold out because right now it's 20 and that's not quite cold enough for me to see the extremes that that little buddy heater may work at all right guys, I don't expect you to be able to see me very well, but uh, we're just after six o'clock and we're down to six degrees and the temperature just keeps on falling. So this test is not gonna be very scientific because <laughs> first of all, the lighting's horrible, but secondly, it's so cold that my gauge, my uh, temperature gauge, my heat gun, uh, isn't even working. Then the, the furnace itself, here's the, the first part. All it is is just the base for this propane tank. This is a brand new propane tank, a one pounder uh, that doesn't have the top off or anything like that. And it just goes inside there. It's kind of the cradle. And then this is the part here. And I don't expect you to see very much of it, but it screws on. It just screws on, or the tank actually screws on to it. And uh, then you turn it on and, and push the button and it starts getting hot. So let's go ahead and get this thing going. Now, what you do is this has a piezo igniter in it so what happens is you uh, push the button uh, to start the pilot light and then hold it there for about 30 seconds and then release the button so it will ignite the furnace the the catalytic that's on there to start the heat radiation because it also is supposed to heat you know some of the area not just the air so that's what it's in the process of doing right now. It's trying to ignite everything. Now the reason I'm doing it in the vans that being empty is because this is kind of worst case scenario because if you're in here and you're moving around your body and everything, plus you have a lot of other stuff in the van that has a tendency to stay warm. I mean, if you put a bunch of canned goods in here and you got batteries and you have a bed and a mattress and cabinets, all that stuff, once it's warm, it takes it a while for that stuff to cool down to where it's bone chilling cold like this van is currently so this would be worst case scenario we're on a really cold day in an empty van that is insulated with a furnace that has a cold propane tank and uh, we'll see what it does you can see here it's it's starting to ignite and it's trying to get to where it needs to be now in my son's case in this van he does have other heating sources you know he could start the van and have it running and and of course the engine heat you know heating the uh, driver's compartment up there would also help heat back here uh, the other thing that he could do is you know build a wall put a blanket up and that would allow him not to to where he's heating the whole front part of the the driver's compartment area and uh, of course he has an electric heater if he's plugged in somewhere 
uh, he can run the electric heater. You can see that this is starting to turn finally and the catalytic is starting to get to the temperature it needs to be to start heating. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the video here. Let me see what time it is. And uh, yeah, we are at uh, 620. I don't know if you can see that, but it's 620. Uh, it says it's 8 degrees. Uh, my thermometer here at the house says it's 7 degrees. And uh, I don't think that my temperature gun has gotten any warmer or any better. So, yeah, it just doesn't want to read. But the, inside the van here, um, it's been sitting for well over 24 hours now. And the temperature, high temperature today was 24. And it had snow all over it, so not a lot of sun got through. So we'll let this run and we'll come back. We're at 30 minutes and uh, the furnace is going full blast there. I did get my gun to work and uh, let's just see what it's like right here. 27 degrees, 27.9, 28, uh, up by the van seat, 14 degrees on the dash, 11 degrees, 12 degrees. Let's try the windshield, uh, 16 degrees. Let's try right in front of this little furnace here, uh, 9 degrees on the floor. And of course, let's see what the furnace is at, just for fun. Yeah, 370, I think I saw 390, 393. Um, but the walls, uh, we're at 18 degrees. So this thing is definitely getting heated up and I've got the door open. So let's close it off and leave it in here for about an hour. Um, it's already a half an hour. So I'll come back here an hour later and uh, we'll see what it's done overall. Uh, this tank only runs 5.6 hours uh, before it's completely empty um, and there's only one setting and it's basically the setting it's going right now so uh, I'll come back in an hour. All right so an hour's gone by and it is definitely more crisp out here. It's three degrees so the thermometer says and there's still snow all over the van. Doesn't look like anything's melting really but then again it's insulated so Let's see what it looks like or feels like when we open the door here. Well, it's definitely warmer in here. Um, I won't say it's comfortable, but it's definitely warmer. Let's see what it says. 16 degrees. I don't know if I can turn on this laser. 25 on the dash. 28. 30 on the windshield. Uh, 13 on this tire. 23 on the 21 on the back of the seat see over here on the walls 30 degrees let's see right here oh yeah 36 degrees up here so this thing is definitely heating up so it's been running for a total of an hour and a half let's see what it feels like if i'm in here it's still crispy though i can definitely tell whoops let me turn the light back on there you still see your breath in here but it's definitely warmer okay so it's definitely getting late at night but i think i can let this run another hour and i can tell the bottle's all iced up it's pretty warm it's i mean you it, he still needs a sleeping bag and you know i think that this furnace is good for taking the chill off and i think it's good for keeping things from freezing inside the van but I, I you know in this kind of temperature i don't know how well it would be to maintain a, a temperature overall of course he's got to have a carbon monoxide detector and a propane sniffer and um you know open a, a window for ventilation that type of thing but i'm gonna let this thing run for about another hour we'll do one more hour and then we'll come back in and see if it's any uh, warmer than what it currently We've is. We've been running now a total of two and a half hours and the temperature has dropped to two degrees. And that's the low. It's kind of funny that it dropped that soon. Um, I think it's gonna go lower than two degrees. Okay, so it looks like the windows of the van are fogged up a little bit. Let's see what it looks like in here. I'm gonna climb in real quick. It's warmer. I'm going to close the door or pull the door closed. And uh, let's go ahead and run this little, little gauge here. Turn this on so you can see it. 
25 degrees on the dash. It's 28 degrees on the back of the seat. The windshield's 26 degrees. Uh, the wall over here is 22. Let's see what it's here. Uh, 36 degrees on the roof. Uh, the floor is 15 degrees. And that tire is 11, 17, 21. Okay. Well, it's warmer in here. I can still see my breath. And again, this thing's kind of set up to heat up objects. Not so much the air, but objects. And it's doing a good job of it. So the fact that all these objects would get heated past a certain point um, really is, uh, you know, a, a positive sign that it would maintain the heat. I'm happy with this. Uh, I think my son will be happy with this. Um, did I expect to come in here and, and it'd be 70 degrees? Uh, maybe. <laughs> I thought maybe this thing could get that warm. But the thing is, is it's only 3,800 BTU. Uh, the nice thing about that is, um, you know, these little tiny one pound tanks last like the uh, advertiser show 5.6 hours uh, i think that's probably pretty accurate i don't see why it wouldn't be uh, you know even if it was wrong uh, let's say five hours we've been running two and a half hours so uh, it would run another two and a half hours and kind of maintain this temperature before you'd have to switch out to a tank you know put a different tank on there i i think this will work out for him again uh, he has a carbon monoxide detector you'd have to run that uh, but I think uh, as far as the heating source, whenever it's 30 degrees, this would be really nice to have. I'm going to put the link down below for this. Do your research on these little furnaces. Try to figure out which one you want. Now, I have a big buddy heater that I could put in here, and this van would be 80 degrees in no time at all. Um, it puts out quite a bit. Uh, but it's also, you know, too big. Uh, whenever you're at 30 degrees, you don't need that big thing. Even on low, it would be too much, and it uses more propane. So overall, this is probably a really good choice for him. And basically, it's something that he can go to if he's out boondocking, and the temperature drops suddenly, and he needs to warm up. Uh, this will allow that to happen. Um, again, I don't recommend anybody do this without having some sort of ventilation to where the carbon monoxide uh, builds up inside and uh, you know causes death. You have to have a carbon monoxide detector uh, that's mounted inside your vehicle if you're gonna be sleeping with something like this, even with the ventilation, it's, it's important. Now there's supposed to be some sort of oxygen depletion uh, set up on these, but I never trust that, I wouldn't trust it. So as far as shutting it off, there's just a button on it. Um, just push the button and uh, find it here. And it's also got a tip thing, uh, in case you tip it. Let's see, the button is right here, I think. Is that it? There we go. Push that, and it's now off. And it's relatively warm. You can see, or maybe you can't see, it's really frosty. I mean, that's... There you go. Really, really frosty. But it's got a nice little handle. You can carry it around. So it's nice. The son's van got warm. <laughs> He's got to go to work tomorrow, and this thing is really frozen up. I might start it for him and, and run it for a little bit. Uh, just to... No, no, I'll let him take care of it tomorrow morning. <laughs> it's, it's his van, and I'll let him do what he needs to do. So I wanted to touch on this while ever it's cold. Uh, again, this is part of the van series, and as far as the build that we're doing, and uh, some of the options you may have or may uh, look towards going to, um, this is uh, one of them, and I wanted to show you what it's like. So we're going to jump into the next little segment of this build. So hopefully uh, we've got something going on as far as actually putting beds and cabinets in here, and maybe even solar. Uh, we're not sure exactly how far we're going to go with it, but we're going to get there.